coming, my friends. You should leave when the last address is given. Something profound is expected, isn't it? No, I have nothing profound to offer. I only invite you to continue to think. My singular effort throughout the assembly spread over now seven months has been to propagate and inculcate a new a culture of thinking and if possible thinking deeply. Because one of my concerns when I look at the panorama of modern culture is the imbalance between action and thinking. And this has serious consequences for the welfare of our species. Today I want to spend a little time, such time as is left from the text that was read out, particularly the section which says, do not conform to the pattern of the world, but rather be transformed. In some of my earlier assembly addresses, I have had occasion to say something at least about the dangers of conforming unthinkingly unthinking, to the ways of the world. I also cautioned you at that time that the temptation to conform to whatever is in vogue, <coughs> the seductions of the status quo, is very, very strong. And unless you are vigilant, and unless you develop yourself intellectually and spiritually, you will be sucked into the maelstrom of this process which has consumed many lives. And you will end up cheated of your own life. It's a very serious matter. Uh, so I will not say anything today about the temptation to conform as well as the self-denigration in conforming. The only thing I want to reiterate is that those who are interested in their own uniqueness must be particularly careful about conforming to existing patterns because Invariably, as a rule, what prevails as a pattern in the public space pertains to the mediocre. And this you can take as the given. But because it is promoted powerfully with all the resources available, including the resources of technology and media, we come under the imperious temptation to conform a time comes when you have to stand out and say, I will not take it anymore. Thus far, but not any further. I hope you will have the discernment, the wisdom, the strength of character to say no to some of these things. Today, let me take the positive part. Be transformed. Now the need to be transformed arises quite simply out of the fact that we have not arrived. We have not reached not only our full stature, but even our true form. We are not what we should be. We have a very, very long way to go. And that responsibility which is cast upon every human being by the species to which we belong, by what uh, Heidegger calls being, with a capital B, and I spend a whole assembly address on this, if you remember, is cuddled by a variety of factors. And only those who are wise about them and learn to avoid these things and remain steadfast in the pursuit of their own true self will end up happy human beings. Others may achieve a lot except happiness and self-respect. So let me very uh, 
quickly and very simply explain to you or illustrate for you some aspects of being transformed. At the most familiar level, you are already to some extent transformed. Once upon a time, and that's not far back, you were little babies. Now you are not those babies. You are transformed. So you are in the process of being transformed. Now you think of um, an artist who takes a piece of canvas, fixes it on the easel. He takes his brush or brushes and paint box and he begins to work on that piece of canvas. I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to see an artist at work. There is an artist studio in my little hometown and I have done it. Spend hours and hours watching this. And I have seen this with my own eyes and I want to say this to you. You know, the artist begins to work on this piece of canvas and for quite some time you are aware of that piece of canvas. And then comes a magical moment when the canvas ceases to be a canvas and you become utterly unaware of that canvas and it becomes a beautiful painting. In the process, and this is what I want to emphasize this morning, in the process the value of that piece of canvas is multiplied maybe a million times. That is transformation. Your education in St. Stephen's College, I pray very humbly, would be an experience of transformation so that when the time comes for you to leave, as indeed the time has come for me to leave, you will not leave the same piece of canvas. You would leave as a masterpiece your value multiplied a million times. Now look at nature. You know, Jesus once said, what does it profit if a grain of wheat remains as a grain of wheat? It remains alone. But if that same grain of wheat falls down and uh, sprouts, comes into a new life, a new world, a new universe, it produces an abundant harvest. The experience of that lonely grain of wheat may be kept in a beautiful bottle or maybe in some precious uh, jewelry box made perhaps of fine gold is nothing, absolutely nothing compared to the experience of that wheat plant which produces another 60, another 100 grains of wheat because between this lonely grain of wheat that is kept in the most beautiful bottle you can ever imagine and the abundant harvest of which the sown grain of wheat is a part. The difference is that the latter has something to do with the hunger of the world. The first is at best a piece of ornament. The second is a blessing on the land. It responds to the needs of the people. And therefore the paradox remains that a grain of wheat finds its fulfillment only by dying to itself in order to come into a new being and becoming part of a new heaven and a new earth. And this is really what education should do to us and do for us. Unfortunately, all of these things have been completely overlooked. And the scope of education reduced lamentably to that of improving your employability in the markets of the world 
which I believe is another insult to the human person. I'm not saying that employment is to be belittled or not valued adequately. I believe that employment is important, but I believe that employment is nothing but work. It's a terrible thing that people want employment but not work. The purpose of work itself is your transformation. The real reward of work is not your monthly salary. It is a transformation that you undergo. Now, etymologically, or if you sort of break down the word to its roots, the root, the, the, the root of the word transformation is form, formation. Trans means beyond. In other words, this concept continually urges us to realize and remember that there is a dimension to our being which is way beyond the present form that we are familiar with. <clears throat> this, I believe, is the greatest source of encouragement for a human being that I don't have to stay like this. I have a scope and a dimension which is absolutely breathtaking. I know this for a fact because I have worked with large numbers of people and done a certain amount of work in psychology. I know that in varying degrees every human being lives tormented by a sense of low self-worth. People try to cover that up through all kinds of gestures and activities, posturing, tricks to draw attention to themselves. Why do you want to, why do I want to draw attention to myself? It is because I believe and I realize that there is nothing in me which would actually motivate others to look at me. If you are a transformed person, you don't have to draw attention to yourself. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, if there is a stirring of the spirit, the world around cannot remain indifferent to it. Stephanians should not have to seek publicity. Stephanians should not have to resort to cheap tricks to draw attention to themselves. Stephanians should matter wherever they are, even if they don't utter a word even if they don't move a limb. When my children were growing up, I used to say a prayer, the prayer that I always say for myself, and that is, they should become people whose presence, silent presence, would, render, would enrich the lives of others. My dear friends, as I now leave, I want to thank you for having stayed on with me in this wonderful journey called the Assembly. In all humility and truthfulness, I have to say that the eight-year-long Assembly addresses, I don't think I have repeated any. These Assembly encounters with my students have been unmistakably the greatest inspiration for my own personal growth. I believe I have come a long way through the assembly. And there is something very special about you and on that I'll close. I don't think I have ever delivered assembly addresses as rich in philosophical content as I have done this year. For me, communication is a continual interaction between uh, those who sit in front of me and myself. And every time I stand up to speak, I'm simply seeking you. So the substance that came into the assembly addresses over the last several months of our coming together, week after week, four times a week, I must say, was largely because of your own quality. I remember telling you on the inaugural assembly occasion, that you are the best batch I have admitted in eight years. And I was not saying that as a manner, manner of speaking, it's my conviction. Your potential is awesome. Your abilities are incredible. 
But the question, of course, remains as to how much, how much of that will be uh, discovered, celebrated, and taken to a level of perfection. I have always believed that the mark of a good educational institution is that it brings out the best from every member of this family. To that extent, I have always believed that St. Stephen's College is, and I hope it remains, a garden of growth. You and I have had the privilege of walking hand in hand in this garden of growth, and I'm immensely grateful. I simply addresses and the opportunity for me to see you face to face, even though at a distance, are the memories that I'll carry, if possible, into the other world. And I really want to thank you from the fullness of my heart for having been part of this tremendous enrichment that I have experienced. And as I leave, I leave you with one request. The college to which you today belong is the greatest institution in its category in this country. Don't worry about uh, NAC accreditation, this, that, and the other. I know institution by thousands. I've had that opportunity. There is no other college like yours. I plead with you to love this college, to cherish this institution, and to give your very best to it. And to be part of this continuing process of building up, renewing, reinforcing a great history and a glorious tradition. You have entered into the fruits of the labors of others. Leave this legacy a little richer, nobler than you found it. From a distance, I shall think of you and pray for you. And in closing, I cannot but say this to you. I love you. You've been such a blessing in my life. God bless you. Let's rise for prayer.